Welcome to a video on the technique of separation of variables to solve differential equations. The technique of separation of variables involves rewriting the equation so that each variable is only on one side of the equation. If a differential equation can be solved by separation of variables, it must fit the following form. Where we have the y part of the equation times dy dx equal to the x part of the equation. So if it fits this form, then we can rewrite it in differential form and then integrate both sides of the equation. Let's go and take a look at some examples. So we want to have the y part on the left side with dy dx. So we'll multiply both sides of this equation by one over y squared. So on the right side, the y squared simplify out on the left side, I'm going to rewrite this as y to the power of negative two dy dx equals three x squared. And now this does fit the form that we're looking for. So let's rewrite this in differential form. So we'd have y to the power of negative two dy must equal three x squared dx. So now we'll integrate both sides of the equation. So the antiderivative of y to the negative two is going to be y to the negative one divided by negative one, and this is going to equal three times x to the third over three plus c. Let's clean this up. This is going to be negative one over y equals x cubed plus c. Multiply through by negative one, we'd have one over y equals negative x cubed minus c. Now we want to solve this for y, so if one over y is equal to negative x cubed plus c, the reciprocals must also be equal. So we would have y over one, or just y equals one over negative x cubed minus c. And this would be the general solution to the given differential equation. Let's take a look at another one. So we want the y part of the equation on the left, and we want the x part of the equation on the right. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by sine x. And I'm also going to replace y prime with dy dx. So this would be equal to one, we'd have dy dx equals, well cosine x divided by sine x would be cotangent x. And let's rewrite this in differential form, we have dy equals cotangent x dx. Now we'll integrate both sides. So we have y equals, now there is a basic integration formula for the antiderivative of cotangent x. It's equal to natural log absolute value sine x. And this would be the general solution to this differential equation. Just in case you didn't remember the antiderivative of cotangent x, I'm gonna go ahead and show this leaving it in the form of cosine x over sine x for a cotangent x. We would have had differential y equals cosine x sine x dx. If we integrate both sides of the equation here, so on the left we would have had y, and then on the right, if we let u equal sine x, then du would equal cosine x dx. So this would actually be one over u du. So the antiderivative of one over u with respect to u would be natural log u, but u is sine x. So if you happen to forget the antiderivative of cotangent x, you could go back and use the quotient and use u substitution. Notice on this problem, they gave us an initial condition so we can find the particular solution, but let's first find the general solution. So taking a look at this differential equation, let's go ahead and add natural log x to both sides of the equation. So we would have x, y, dy, dx equals natural log x on the right. And now we'll divide both sides by x. So we have y times dy, dx equals natural log x divided by x. Let's rewrite this in differential form. We have y times differential y is equal to natural log x 
over x dx. And now we'll integrate both sides. So on the left, we'll have y squared over 2 must equal. Now on the right side, we're going to have to perform u substitution again. But now we'll let u equal the numerator. So that differential u is going to be equal to 1 over x dx. Since natural log x is equal to u, and 1 over x dx is equal to du, this is just the integral of u du, which would be u squared divided by 2. And since u is natural log x, we have natural log x squared all over 2, plus, let's call it c1. Now what we can do is multiply both sides of the equation by 2. That would give us y squared equals natural log x squared. And we can rewrite that like this plus 2 times c1, I'll let c equal 2 times c1, another constant. Even though this is defined implicitly, let's go ahead and leave it like this. We're also given that y1 is equal to 0. So when x is 1, y would be 0. So let's go ahead and find the particular solution here. Well, natural log 1 is equal to 0. 0 squared is 0. So c is equal to 0. So our particular solution would be y squared equals natural log x squared. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.